Hi everybody, Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. We're moving on into the brain here and we're finally discussing the white matter. So most of the area of the cerebrum that sits deep to the cerebral cortex is made up of white matter. And we refer to it just as cerebral white matter. Don't forget that white matter has that color because it's rich in myelin because of the myelinated fibers, the myelinated axons in these, this nervous tissue. Now we can identify axons or fibers as we tend to refer to them here that run in certain directions and are present in certain locations in the brain or even in the spinal cord. So we use the term association fibers when we're talking about fibers or axon that travel from one area to another area within one and the same hemisphere. So let's say we're looking at just the left cerebral hemisphere. We would then refer to fibers that stay within that hemisphere as association fibers. On the other hand, and I'm jumping here to commissures, commissures or commissural fibers, they're going to be interconnecting the two hemispheres. And finally, projection fibers literally project from the brain into the spinal cord or vice versa from the spinal cord into the brain. Projection fibers are fibers that we'll discuss the most really because they allow for communication between the rest of the body and the central nervous system. And so for instance here we see some very well understood projection fibers called the pyramids and they're given this name because of the shape of the neurons that um, are part of these axons. And so notice how these pyramids, which by the way arise from the primary cor motor cortex, how in this frontal cut of the brain create this fan shape as they start in the primary motor cortex and therefore we refer to we refer to that as the corona radiata if you translate that corona means crown a radiating crown essentially but then eventually all of those axons start to bundle up and where they do that that area in particular we call the internal capsule and we will mention the internal capsule again when we get to the nuclei that sit deep within the white matter. And so these pyramids start as interneurons and eventually they're going to synapse with somatic motor neurons which carry the action potentials to our skeletal muscles. So these pyramids are literally going to be neural pathways that carry neural signals out of the brain down into the spinal cord, right? And then via somatic motor neurons, the action potentials can leave our central nervous system. So because of their direction, we would also say that they are descending pathways. They descend or they leave the brain. There are going to be pathways, of course, that go into the brain and they would be called ascending. Now right here, notice that most of these pyramidal pathways are crossing over. So if we follow these guys here, a good portion of them cross over and now make it to the other side of the spinal cord and then go and make muscles on this side of the body contract. So they're definitely contralateral, aren't they? We refer to this area of crossing over as decussation. Now many, many pathways, whether they are descending pathways or ascending pathways, and the pyramids are not the only descending ones, there's many more, 
many of them will cross over to where they therefore are said to be contralateral pathways. But some of them do not, and then they are ipsilateral pathways. So if you can visualize this, that'll really help you understand the spinal cord better, where we will really follow a lot of these axons from the brain all the way into the spinal cord and vice versa from the spinal cord into the brain. Now there are two major parts of white matter that play a role in interconnecting the left and the right hemispheres so they are considered commissures and one of those you might have heard of it's called the corpus callosum. So the corpus callosum is this big C-shaped structure right here. It's full of myelinated fibers that travel from the left to the right hemisphere and vice versa. Slightly inferior to it, we have what is referred to as the fornix, also a commissure and very involved in um, passing on information about olfaction. Now, since we have this picture, Notice that right here, I'll use blue here, we have a term that says septum pellucidum. I will spell it out for you. Septum pellucidum. And that is a little membrane that separates two ventricles. So if I, let's fill this in right here, the septum pellucidum right here. If I were to poke this membrane that is now colored blue, my pin on the other side would end up in a ventricle that is filled with cerebrospinal fluid. And of course, on this side of the slide that you're looking at, you would have another ventricle also filled with cerebrospinal fluid. And you can see there's even a third ventricle here and eventually we'll see there's a fourth one there. Maybe getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but this is a good picture to show some of these structures. We're still not done with discussing the very big cerebrum. Remember the cerebrum is all of these crinkles plus this white matter. Now deep within the white matter, you know, so if we were to slice through these sulci and gyri and, pa and penetrate the cerebral cortex, we would run into white matter and some of that white matter is finally visible here. But deep in the white matter, we have nuclei. And let's discuss those as our third subpart of our cerebrum in the next video.